19, do I succeed? Yes, you're now hiding behind the pillar. Okay, so now I sneak up to the wizard and try to stab him in the back. Oh, don't roll two dice. You walked out, so you don't have advantage anymore. Huh? Has that happened at your table? Or has that rule never come up at your table? Either way, they both demonstrate that the rules for stealth and hiding in D&D 5e are n confusing and not very intuitive, and are often ignored for that reason. And as a result, a lot of combats in D&D, that contributes to a lot of combats in D&D being very static, or the rogue just resorting to having an ally go into melee with an enemy to get advantage against that creature. Well, in this video, I'll be going over how D&D players can incorporate the rules for stealth and hiding from Pathfinder 2nd Edition, which I would argue has a better set of rules that are consistent, clear, and can lead to more dynamic combats. Now, some Pathfinder players will be hearing this and saying, well, the rules are not very clear in Pathfinder. Well, I would argue that they are and are much more helpful at the table, but they're not presented well in the book. So this video has two purposes. First, to give a set of house rules to improve D&D 5e player's game, but also to give a clear explanation of the rules for Pathfinder 2e players, reinforced with a patented ro rules lawyer uh, combat demonstration, which will reinforce what I go through through an example. My name is Ronald, I am the rules lawyer, and I am a lawyer who also teaches young people tabletop role-playing games. If you end up liking the video, please click like, and that helps the algorithm. And also consider subscribing to the channel. I actually already have a video on what the next edition of D&D can uh, incorporate from Pathfinder 2nd Edition, but I plan to have a new, more in-depth video coming out soon. I also have other content that so far is focused mostly on Pathfinder 2e, but I'm going to be broadening out to other games soon. So yeah, subscribe and also uh, join my growing Discord community where we talk games and also organize uh, Pathfinder 2e game sessions and consider supporting my Patreon. I'm gonna quickly go over how the rules in D&D for stealth and visibility and hiding are not very intuitive and are confusing. And I'm not talking about the rules for how a group of characters can sneak up to another group. You can pretty much handle that with a simple and a single skill roll. I'm more talking about the relation between one creature to another and how that can dynamically change in the course of combat and how you can affect that and how that's affected by the environment. Going to go into the details of that. <clears throat> so what can you do in D&D to avoid the notice of the enemy? You can take the hide action. You have one action per turn in D&D and the hide action says that you make a dexterity stealth check and to do so, follow the rules in Chapter 7 for hiding. If you succeed, you gain certain benefits as described in the Unseen Attackers and Targets section later in this chapter. So this commits the cardinal sin of referring to other parts of the rulebook. But basically, when you look at those other parts of the rulebook, it boils down to this. When you want to become hidden after combat has begun, you need to take the hide action. and. When can you hide? The player's handbook says that the DM decides when circumstances are appropriate for hiding. So it's up to the DM. The guidance it gives is that you cannot hide from a creature that can see you clearly, which itself is open to interpretation. Uh, one can be, one DM can say you need to be in complete darkness, while another DM can say, well, you're partially hidden by the branches of that tree. That's enough. Now, a DM can just resolve to make these decisions on a case-by-case -case basis, but that has implications. It might set a precedent for how you'll rule similar situations in the future. And also, monsters, of course, not just player characters, uh, have occasion to hide as well. So what is the benefit of hiding? Well, our hide action refers to a later section of the chapter, and when we look there, it says that enemies have disadvantage when attacking you if they can correctly guess your location. Meanwhile, if they cannot see you, you have advantage on your attacks against them. 
Now, can they know your location? Well, it's implied that if they cannot hear you, in addition to not being able to see you, they do not know your location. Meanwhile, if you attack them, the moment you attack them, they then know your location. So what's not answered there is if you hide and move somewhere else, does the enemy hear you? That, and can they follow what location you're in? Well, that is up to every individual DM to determine. Okay, so back to our example, the rogue player says, oh, I now am hiding and now I want to approach the enemy with my dagger and stab them. Well, it says in the player handbook that enemies stay alert for signs of danger all around. So if you come out of hiding and approach a creature, it usually sees you. So it says it usually sees you, which is a qualified statement and leaves it up to the DM. But normally it's clearly implied they do see you and you lose whatever advantage you gained from hiding. Well, let's say that the rogue is an arcane trickster and knows the invisibility spell and becomes invisible before approaching the creature. Well, there's another problem there because what did hiding achieve? The invisibility spell already gives you advantage uh, in your attacks against an enemy. So there was no point in hiding before you approached. And meanwhile, uh, the invisible condition says that for the purpose of hiding, you are heavily obscured. So if you're invisible and decide not to hide and walk away, do the enemies, are they able to follow your location? This is yet another DM call and many forums, many people on forums suggest that they actually can follow your location and they simply have disadvantage when attacking you. Let's say that enemy then casts see invisibility and the spell says that you see invisible creatures as if they were visible. Well, the lead designer, the lead rules designer of Wizards of the Coast, which makes D&D, says that see invisibility does not eliminate the fact that you have disadvantage in attacking an invisible creature even though you see them as if they were visible. So this is yet another contradiction and yet another reason why a lot of DMs don't run these rules as written. So what results is that a lot of 5e DMs run on their sense of common sense, which frankly makes these rules a net minus because if they don't clarify and what people are doing anyway is running on their common sense, it's better that they perhaps not exist at all. In contrast, the rules in Pathfinder 2e for these things are clear and consistent, as I hope to show in this video, but they're not not—they're presented poorly in the core rulebook. And this video, I hope, uh, will serve two purposes of summarizing and explaining these rules and then reinforcing them with a combat demonstration for 2e players, but also presenting a set of, I hope, will be seen as useful house rules for 5e players to incorporate into their games. The first thing to go over is that Pathfinder has clear terms to describe states of awareness that an enemy creature can have of you. Uh, as opposed to using natural language, which the 5e designers say, which is kind of lets them off the hook uh, in terms of being clear with their rules, uh, Pathfinder 2e um, says very clearly that you can be undetected to an enemy, which means that they have no idea what where you are. So if you were on a battle grid, they have no idea what square or hex on that grid you are. Uh, one step up above that is to be hidden, which means that the enemy knows where you are at, but they can't actually observe you. Let's say they are blinded by some magical effect, but they can hear you and they know you are right there 10 feet away from them, but they can't actually see where your head is located. They can't see the position of your arm. When they try to target you, you are hidden to them. And as a result, they have a 50-50 chance of targeting you. And they have to roll a 20-sided die and get an 11 or higher. Now, interestingly, in Pathfinder 2e, this also is true between allies. These levels of awareness also apply uh, among members of the party. So a beneficial spell effect or any effect also would need to get past this 50-50 check. 
Then there is observed, which means that they can see you with what Pathfinder 2E calls a precise sense, which for humans is sight and for a bat would be their hearing. They, they can actually see you precisely as you move. And it should be noted that you could be covered in fog, which par partially obscures you, but they can actually see you precisely while you are obscured in fog or maybe are in shadow but not in complete darkness. You are still observed at that point, and we'll get to those um, concealment effects in a bit. You should note that these conditions are not inherent to a creature. It's a relationship between you and another creature. So if an enemy is blinded, for example, then all of your, you and your party members are hidden to that enemy immediately when they are blinded, because they know what square you're still in at the moment that they were blinded, assuming you have not moved somewhere else. But to that enemy's allies, you and your party members are still observed. Those are the three states of awareness that a creature can have of you. So how do we affect those states of awareness? Uh, we'll go over first the hide action. Hide is one action to make yourself go from being observed to being hidden to creatures. And nothing more than that. You cannot become undetected by doing this. You cannot hide while standing in the middle of a brightly lit room while your enemies can see you. You need to have either cover or concealment. Cover is an obstacle that can block attacks, so usually a physical obstacle. So the a pillar or the corner of a building you're standing behind a wall and those in pathfinder 2e give you a bonus to armor class just like in 5e um, starting with a plus two bonus the second thing that you can have to attempt to hide is concealment you could be standing out in the open not have cover but it's a very uh dimly lit room if the enemy does not have low light vision or dark vision, Pathfinder 2E has this amount of light called dim light that means that they have trouble targeting you. Uh, and when you're concealed, they have a 20% chance of failing to target you if they attack you. They have to roll a 20-sided die and get a 5 or higher. Uh, another thing that gives concealment can be a, a fog. So. Note that these two things can both be combined in Pathfinder 2E. You can be in a dimly lit room behind cover and both help you against the enemy. But you can improve that further by hiding uh, and becoming hidden to your enemies. To hide, your character makes a stealth check, which is then compared to the perception DCs of the enemies, which are like passive perception from 5E. And by rule, this is actually rolled secretly by the GM, though some GMs may choose to depart from that. And you can be, as a result, hidden to some creatures, but not others. Uh, what's the benefit? You become hidden, as opposed to observed, when you succeed, and um, you, so they therefore have a 50-50 chance of failing to target you if they try to target you. Uh, GMs probably make it so that if you are using cover, that you're only hidden to those enemies that you can plausibly use that cover against. So not someone who's behind you. And in addition, you have an advantage in attacking them. They become, they gain the flat-footed condition against you, uh, which in Pathfinder 2E means that they have a minus two penalty, circumstance penalty, to their armor class. So they become easier to hit to you. If you're a rogue, you can now do sneak attack damage against them. Uh, the thing is though, that once you attack them, you lose the hidden condition and become observed again immediately afterward. Uh, there's only a few things you can do to re while, um, while retaining your hidden condition. One of them is to step, which is to use a whole action to move five feet or to sneak, which we'll get into in a sec, or to do something unobtrusive that the GM approves, let's say taking something out of your backpack. There's another nice trick to becoming hidden, uh, which you can actually do out in the open in a brightly lit room. It's to create a diversion, 
where you do something um, to distract the enemies uh, using your deception skill. And this is a nice example of how you can Pathfinder 2E encourages and gives you mechanical rewards for using your skills in combat. To create a diversion, uh, this is you using one action to do something distracting, which can be saying something to the enemy, in which case you need to share language, or doing something physical, um, and to, such as pointing behind them, causing them to look away. Uh, this time you're rolling a deception check, and that is compared to the perception DCs of the enemy. Unlike hide, you can actually, as the player, by rule, roll this check yourself and see your die roll. Um, however, um, this only lasts until the end of your turn. And if you want it to last longer, we'll get to how you can do that in a second. Next is the sneak action. And this is you creeping around the battlefield, trying to lose the enemies. And specifically, you have to be hidden at first. And this, the benefit is to gain the undetected condition, so they can no longer um, perceive where you are exactly. So the requirements to sneak are first you must be hidden, and then you must, um, it takes one action, and you get to move up to half your speed um, to a place where you have cover or concealment, which I went over earlier. Uh, at the end of your movement, the, uh, you do, your character does a stealth check that is then compared to the perception DCs of the enemies. By rule, this is a secret roll by the GM. If during the path of your sneaking about, you benefited from cover, that would be a numerical bonus to your stealth check. This is how, if you had created a diversion, you can stay hidden, and in fact, you can become undetected if you do this after creating a diversion. Uh, so yes, if you succeed on your roll, uh, you become undetected. If you fail on your roll, but do not get a critical failure, then you remain hidden. The enemy knows what square you're in, but they cannot observe you yet. They still have that 50-50 mischance. If you critically fail on your sneak check, you go to being observed. So even if you fail this check and your failure is not that bad, the enemy is still flat-footed to you. And so your rogue can actually now sneak up to the enemy after having hidden behind uh, cover. But because you need to have cover or concealment at the end of your sneak, that rogue may still want to have a dagger handy to throw at an enemy um, uh, in order to keep that sneak attack damage. This is one example of how 2E uses the four degrees of success system to create a system that's both simple and uh, allows for nuance. Additionally, in the cases of an enemy who uh, simply cannot observe you for some reason, such as they're blinded and they rely on their sight, or it's a completely dark room and they rely on their sight, once you become undetected, and it could be during your sneak action, your first sneak action actually, uh, you don't need to worry about ending behind cover or in concealment in that case against that creature. If you successfully sneak, you remain undetected. So let's layer on top of this now the effects of the environment. Um, let's say the room is completely dark and against a party of human adventurers, we now have a goblin that's skulking about. That goblin will always be either undetected or hidden to the humans. The humans will never observe that goblin, no matter how obvious the goblin itself makes, even if that goblin just stabbed the fighter in the front, um, the fighter can only um, get a 50-50 chance of targeting that goblin. The fighter can know where it is, it becomes hidden to the fighter, but still a 50-50 mischance. Now, let's say that this room is dimly lit the human party can now observe that goblin skulking about. Clearly, they can see it moving around. However, the dim light now gives them a 20% mischance against it. The goblin is now concealed to the party. The goblin is still observed by the party, but it is additionally concealed. Uh, another instance is fog or smoke. A, the human rogue can uh, throw down a smoke stick with one action, 
gain concealment against all enemies as a result, including against that goblin who cannot see through smoke, clearly, and use her second action to hide since she now benefits from concealment, and then use her third action to sneak away. And she went from concealed to hidden to undetected through those three actions. Now this brings us to the different senses and how they play with these rules. Uh, player characters generally rely on their sight, and that in Pathfinder is called a precise sense. And with your eyes, you can detect, um, like I said, where someone's head is, the position of their, their limbs, uh, how they're trying to attack you, etc. Uh, hearing is an instance of what Pathfinder calls an imprecise sense, in which case the best that you can perceive a creature with your hearing is for that creature to be hidden to you, to uh, improve it so that they are no longer undetected, but you now know what square they're in as a result of your hearing, and therefore they now become hidden to you. So let's say you become blinded by a enemy spellcaster. It, they cast a spell and you, um, all of your enemies now immediately become hidden or undetected to you. Um, an enemy rogue can now walk up to you without having to sneak because even if they critically fail on their sneak check, if they try to sneak or if they don't even try to sneak at all and s walk up to you, the most you can perceive them is that they're hidden. Uh, they, you are now flat-footed to them, they can do sneak attack damage against you. Then uh, we humans have uh, the sense of smell, which Pathfinder defines as a vague sense, not as precise as hearing. You cannot locate exactly where something is. You could just tell that something is in the vicinity. So if you are blinded and you are made deaf by the enemy, the most you can perceive enemies at that point is that they are undetected uh, against you. You just know that they're somewhere around you, but you can't quite place them unless they're touching you. Let's say they're not touching you. Uh, in that case, they are undetected to you. That's the most you can perceive them. So this becomes a handy shortcut for describing a whole variety of situations. So a dog that has a more refined sense of smell than humans do, uh, treat their uh, smell not as a vague sense like we do, but as an imprecise sense. They can know where an enemy is, but they still have a 50-50 mischance if they are blinded. And um, a barbarian, by the way, in Pathfinder 2, you can take a level one feat that makes it so that they can smell enemies as an imprecise sense uh, when they rage, which is cool. Uh, another uh, thing is that uh, bats have hearing as a precise sense. So um, you can cover a whole variety of creatures using these simple words. So now we have a clear set of rules of how to deal with magical invisibility in Pathfinder 2e. So let's say you're an arcane trickster and you cast invisibility on yourself. At that moment, the enemy still knows where you were when you cast that spell. So you are now hidden to them. They know what square you're in, but they now have the problem of targeting you, and they immediately are now flat-footed to your attacks. Well, if you try to sneak somewhere now and you succeed on your stealth check, you now become undetected to them and they can no longer follow uh, your path. If you fail on your check, um, then you remain hidden throughout your movement and they can follow your path. If you critically fail on your stealth check, you would normally become observed, but since they rely on sight, you remain hidden to them throughout your movement. And finally, during your sneak action, since you become, if you succeed, since you become undetected during the course of your movement and at the end of your movement, you do not, you do not need to worry about ending behind an obstacle. You can be going into the middle of the room because it's impossible for your enemies to directly observe you. You don't need to worry about ending behind cover or in concealment. So now we can intuitively handle the situation of sneaking up to an enemy. You hide. You have to do a special stealth action in addition to reach the enemy, and then you can get 
some kind of mechanical advantage against them. If you're invisible, you can do the same. And even if you do it proclaiming loudly where you are, you still have uh, advantage, some mechanical advantage against that enemy before reappearing again, assuming normal invisibility. The last thing to mention for the sake of completeness is the unnoticed condition, which does not come up very often at all in Pathfinder 2E. And that means that the enemy has no idea you are around. And so an example, a real life example, hopefully this doesn't apply to you, uh, is if you hear a window being opened in your house by a burglar, you know something is up, that there's an enemy in the vicinity, uh, but you don't know exactly where they are. So, okay, one, they are undetected to you, but they are um, noticed by you. You know that they are in the vicinity. Um, if you did not hear that window opening, then the burglar is in your house and is unnoticed by you because you had no idea they're in your house while also being undetected um, because you have no idea where they are. Um, so uh, where does this come up? This is the, um, there is a archetype called the assassin in Pathfinder 2E that if they want to assassinate somebody as a high level ability, they have to be unnoticed by the enemy. And also admittedly, the words are confusing. They both start with the letter U. Uh, the way I remember it is when I hear the word detect, I think of a robot using its uh, robotic abilities to uh, zero in on where an enemy is. Um, so being undetected means you avoid that enemy sonar or whatever they're using that's trying to pinpoint where you're at. While unnoticed has that nice soft N um, at the beginning of the word notice and suggests um, an extreme amount of obliviousness. So that's how I remember it at least. Now we've covered the rules for evading detection. Once you become undetected, what can the other side do? We now arrive at the seek action. Uh, it uses one action and it's to try to uh, locate where an enemy is um, or a creature. And once they have become undetected to you. So let's say there's an invisible burglar in your house. Um, you spend one action and you roll a perception check, or actually in this case, the GM would roll. It's a secret roll. And in this case, nearly all GMs would roll it secretly uh, in actual play. And that's compared to the stealth DC of all the creatures uh, in that area. And the GM, it's suggested in the book, would limit you to a 30 foot cone or a 15 foot radius around yourself. And those uh, creatures you succeed against then become hidden to you. You have upgraded them from undetected to hidden. Uh, specifically speaking in lay terms, you now know what square they're in or what hex they're in on a battle grid. And they're still, uh, you still have a 50-50 mischance against them, however. In addition, once you seek such creatures and you can seek, you can successfully perceive multiple creatures um, using the seek action, you can uh, point it out to your allies using the point out action. Um, you point out one creature that is undetected to your allies and make it hidden to your allies. You need to plausibly be able to convey this through words and visual cues. Um, and if you're unable to do that for some reason, let's say you are mute, magically muted, or they are magically deafened and you're trying to convey something, the allies need to do a perception check versus the enemy's stealth DC uh, to um, accurately perceive where you're pointing. Okay, that's a corner case. But we now have some clear rules provided in 2E to deal with sharing information with party members. If you're a 5E player or DM, how do you incorporate these into your game? Well, like many 5E players, you probably have some experience making up your own rules um, to fill in the holes, so leave it at your discretion. Don't feel like you need to include everything wholesale. Don't feel like you need to include every bonus. Uh, 
as we'll see in the combat demonstration, there are some pretty cool um, interactions between by being able to stack a number of these effects on each other, which you may want to um, incorporate as well and not simply use advantage and disadvantage for every situation. Maybe you'll want to have advantage countered by a plus two bonus, for example. And finally, um, 5e does not have the three action economy of Pathfinder. And so a number of these things like seeking an undetected enemy and pointing it out to an ally, you may want to call them free actions or make it cost a bonus action or a certain amount of movement, maybe half of your speed in order to do one of these things or more and have that as a set of alternative costs for players to spend during their turn. 